Hello, my new covenant brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. I want to just um, welcome you guys all back to another um, awesome chapter by Mr. Beloved brother Paul Gennady, who wrote the book, The Anointing and Its Pitfalls. Um, this is certainly a, um, oh, this is this is an amazing opportunity for us all to to grow and to learn and to be empowered by uh, not only the word of God, by but to to receive the impartation of of the revelations that uh, our brother Paul. Um, Mr. Janadu, he's he, he's imparting to us, and the, the grace that God has given him to to um, to write on on paper all these awesome uh, chapters and books that he has available for us as as um, soon to be missionaries, soon to be pastors, soon to be uh, evang great evangelists. Um, you know, God is God is an amazing God. His word says that. He will do above and beyond what we can dream, think, or imagine. So as we continue to hunker down and um, be doers of his word and keep our eyes fixed on the author and finisher of our faith, um, there's many, many uh, things. The Bible says that signs follow those who believe. Um, we don't have to we don't have to chase after the signs. They they chased they chase after us, just like Mr. Paul Gennady says that um, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. So that's because um, that's what happens when when you're a doer of God's word and you're and you're um, you know you're you're on time. You're you're punctual. You're um, you're you're ready to listen. You're ready to 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 do the work of the evangelist. You're ready to 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 do whatever you're called upon um, to advance the kingdom of God. So. Without further ado, uh, I just want to just um, bless you all for um, for reading this together with me, and as we as we read together, um, I pray that God would give us ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. He give us a spirit of wisdom, revelation, and knowledge of His Word, um, and uh, we we want to just um, bless Mr. Janadu for his for his um, for his work and for his time and. For all the years that he's invested in um, in others uh, to sow into others' lives, we just pray um, just the favor of the Lord would be upon him, and the grace of, of God would be upon him, and the mercy of God would be upon him all the days of his life, and that they would follow his family, his children, and um, those that are coming up in the ranks behind him. Um, I just pray, Father God, that you would um, humble us, God. You would. Uh, Give us the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And, and we, we pray, God, uh, for the fear of God. We pray for the fear of the Almighty God. I pray that you would, that this, we want to see revival. That this, this is what this is all about. We want to see revival. We want to see people's hearts. Um, we want to see people drawn back to their first love. Um, we want to see people on fire for you, God. We want to see uh, men and women who, who are uh, truly standing up for righteousness and holiness and uh it's it's by the fear of god uh, that men depart from evil and it's by the fear of the lord um that holiness is is manifest so i pray that we would that we would not fear him in a way that we, because we're scared of him but we would fear being fear not being in his presence fear not being connected to the vine fear not being able to come boldly before his throne of grace Fear the fear not of of being able to just um, be still and know that He is God and to hear from Him as Mr. Janadu and New Covenant Church teaches that um, that they they want us to hear from God. You know, anybody anybody can pray a long prayer and sure they're great prayers are great, but to be able to sit in the presence of God and just listen and hear from Him is something else. It's you know it, it, that's where really truly people are um, are awed and, and amazed when. When you get a word of knowledge and, and then you, you obey that word of knowledge and it comes to pass or that word of wisdom and or that prophecy and it's like, wow, you know, the Lord spoke that to me and I and I did what was asked and required of me and look at look at me now, you know, I'm I'm doing I'm doing above and beyond what I ever can think or imagine, you know, and so God wants to give you guys the desires of your hearts and I pray that 
that that would um, that, that that would be true. I just speak the oracles of God over you. I speak the manifold wisdom of Christ over you guys. I pray that no weapon formed against us would prosper in, um, th as our, as we go and we uh, put one foot forward toward the upper call of Christ. Um, I pray that you guys are having a good week. Um, and those of you that aren't, that are struggling, um, I just pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that uh, you would give God your um, your burden uh, for his yoke is, is light and his burden is light. So just got, do a transfer with the Lord right now. Just Let's just take three deep breaths. Repeat after me, say, God, I'm precious to you. Amen. We are precious to God. God God is our Father, and He looks at us as His children, and He wants nothing but the best for us. So let's be diligent, and um, let's be faithful in the little things, and, uh, and watch God God move and um, through and in us. As we, uh, as we shot our feet with the, the shoes of the gospel of peace. And, um, and we just uh, continue to press forward to the goal. Upward calling in Christ Jesus. So with that being said, um, we're going to go ahead and start this chapter. Chapter 4 It's titled, Don't Tap Into Someone Else's Anointing. Don't Tap Into Someone Else's Anointing. God told Elijah to anoint Elisha. God told Elijah to anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, prophet in his place. I, I'm sorry. Immediately, Elijah went off to seek out Elisha and then threw his mantle on him. Elisha understood the implication of that act. And he left everything to follow Elijah as his servant, apprentice, and adopted son. No, he says that he left everything to follow Elijah and his servant, apprentice, and adopted son. We too must be willing to... So when, when the word of God says that deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me, that word deny literally means to... There is no more me in the equation. Me does not exist. I does not exist. And me does not exist. It's all for the Father. Everything is for God. Everything is for our Father. Everything is to bring glory to Him, honor, and um, and praise to the Father. And uh, we are blessed to have um, spiritual fathers a spirit, uh, that will adopt us. Um, especially myself, I... I I feel super privileged and honored to to have been um, adopted as a, as, a, as a spiritual son by my pastor and um, I'm just super grateful and and that's what we want to do is we want to um, we want to you know we want to um, we want to make our, our, our spiritual fathers happy we want to make our wives happy we want to make our uh, everybody that we're that we come into contact with we want them to be to receive the joy the joy of the Lord by the word says that it's by his goodness that men depart from evil um, so we want to make sure that we are um, continuing to walk in the love of Christ um, and uh, and, and being um, like I said good stewards of his word and diligent and um, just men and women that are after uh, and seeking God's heart so for Elisha that was not enough when the spirit of the Lord revealed to Eli Elisha that his master would soon be taken away from him. He wanted more than just the authority that came with the mantle. He now wanted to inherit a double portion of Elijah's anointing. A double portion does not mean double the level of anointing that Elijah carried. This is the terminology used for the way a man would divide his property among his children. Again, a double portion does not mean double the level of anointing that Elijah carried. This is the terminology used for the way a man would divide his property among his children. 
Under Jewish law, the eldest son always received a double portion. Again, under the Jewish law, the eldest son always received a double portion. Elijah was already aware that Elisha knew the Lord would soon take him to heaven. Again, Elisha was already aware that Elisha knew the Lord. I'm sorry. Elijah was already aware that Elisha oh, knew the Lord would soon take him to heaven. So he offered Elisha his last request. This was immediately after Elisha has witnessed how Elijah divided the water of the river Jordan with his mantle. He wanted so much to be like his master. Second Kings chapter two, verse nine through 10 read, when they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet, if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise, it will not. Although Elijah said it was a hard thing, he didn't say it was not possible. The fact that Elisha could inherit a portion of Elijah's spirit tells me that Elisha had some had some left. Again, the fact that Elisha Elisha could inherit a portion of Elijah's spirit tells me that Elijah had some left. This was evidence that Elijah hadn't finished his race when he was taken up to heaven. This was evidence that Elijah hadn't did not finish his race when he was taken up to heaven. As it happened, Elisha too didn't finish his race. As it happened, Elisha too didn't finish his race before he died. Two Elisha's seven miracles. Elisha performed 13 miracles in his lifetime. Second Kings 13, 20, 21. Elisha died and was buried. Now Moabite raiders used to enter the country every spring. Elisha died and was buried. Now Moabite raiders used to enter the country every spring. Once while some Israelites were burying a man, suddenly they saw a band of raiders. So they threw the man's body into Elisha's tomb. When the body touched Elisha's bones, the man came to life and stood up on his feet. <laughs> oh, jeez. The, the anointing still remained on his bones years after he had died and raised up a dead body. Being touched by the anointing on a man is in ministry is far different than, sorry, being touched by the anointing on a man in ministry is far different than inheriting a man's anointing. The anointing the dead man got from Elisha's bones was quite different than the anointing Elisha inherited from Elijah by taking custody of his mantle. This calls for a warning. Those of you eager to tap into someone's anointing, beware. You may go away with the anointing, but it is also likely that you might get more than you bargained for. <laughs> I have seen so many young ministers tap into the anointing of a senior minister they admired and thereafter their personality, lifestyle, and ultimately ministry began to mimic that of their donor. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, help them, Lord. Uh, we are not called to be carbon copies of anyone except for the Lord. Amen. Amen. On some occasions, ministers feel the urge to pass on their anointing to fellow ministers who attend their conferences. All Elijah had in mind when he placed his mantle on young Elijah was to have an, a, an apprentice who would learn from him and succeed him. God's order to anoint Elijah was the same as for the two others. Great, 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 great chapter. 
Um, here's a, here's a uh, QR code you can scan. Uh, it says Reverend Dr. Paul Janadu teaching on the anointing video 9. Do not take a sh shortcut in order to receive the anointing. Go directly to the source instead of tapping into someone else's anointing. It, anointing over an individual is specifically designed for that individual. The anointing that Moses placed on Aaron and his sons was for a specific purpose. Amen. Elisha was anointed as the successor to Elijah. When he received a double portion of Elisha's spirit, he was receiving this as an inheritance. Uh, then the Lord said to him, Go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. Uh, when you get there, anoint Hazel king over Aram. Also anoint Jehu son of Jimshi, king over Israel, and anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, from Abel, Mehaloah, to succeed you as prophet. First Kings 19, 15-16. Of the three individuals, God instructed Elisha to anoint. Only Jehu was actually anointed with oil. And that was by Elisha, Elisha through one of his servants' prophets. Um, Elisha, and not Elijah, was the one who announced to Hazel, that he would become king over Aram. As for Elisha, Elisha only placed his mantle on him and apparently took it back later. It seems clear to me that Elisha was expected to learn from his master that the way to get the anointing was directly from God. Praise God. El Elisha, on the other hand, had other ideas. <laughs> um, the power without the person. The first warning sign came soon after Elisha received Elisha's mantle. Um, Elisha then picked up Elisha's cloak. Eli 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 Elisha then excuse me, picked up Elisha's cloak that had fallen from him and went back on back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the cloak that had fallen from Elisha and sh struck the water with it. Uh, where now is the Lord? Where now is the Lord, the God of Elisha? He asked. When he struck the water, it divided to the right and to the left, and he crossed over. Second Kings 2, 13, 14. He used the mantle to part the river Jordan quite all right, just as Elijah had done previously. We can definitely say that the anointing has been transferred. However, some vital was missing. Elisha had no personal relationship with the God of Israel. Ooh, man, that's powerful. He, he could only ask, where now is the Lord, the God of Elisha? For he had no idea where he was, or indeed, who he was. Uh, he couldn't say like Elisha, Elisha had confidently declared to Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. 1 Kings 17.1 Elijah had the anointing, but he also stood in the presence of the Lord. Acts 19, verse 13 says, For him the Lord was his God, whereas for Elisha the Lord was the God of Elisha. This is reminiscent of the sons of Sceva in Acts 19, verse 13. Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. There, they were using the name without a relationship with the risen Savior. It, and it backfired. If only Elisha knew that the anointing is a two-edged sword. <laughs> Amen. It can heal and it can wound. Amen. 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 Uh, Here's another QR code, Reverend Dr. Paul Giannati teaching on the anointing video 10. Because Elisha was present with Elijah, or I'm sorry, because Elisha was present when Elijah was taken up to heaven by the chariot of fire, he received a double portion of Elijah's anointing. When Elijah struck the Jordan River with the mantle, he said, where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? Even though Elijah had a double portion of Elijah's spirit, he did not have the same relationship with God as Elijah did. You can use the power of God when the person of God is absent. Power is not what gets us into heaven. However, it is our relationship with God. Elisha had the power to do twice the miracles that Elijah did, but he died for an illness. Died of an illness. If we have a public 
If we have a double portion of Elijah's anointing to do miracles, we will not receive the reward for it when we get to heaven because it is not in our it is not our anointing. Ooh, wow. We should desire to have our own anointing and our own relationship with God. Wow, that is powerful right there. Okay, so um wow, 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 wow. Oh man. Um I almost don't want to say nothing on this, um, but I'm just going to pray in the Holy Spirit right now just for a minute because I feel like God still has more on this. So, Okay, so I, I hear the Lord say that um, we need to be we need to be in this meaning in this um, in this uh, okay. So those of us, most of everybody that's well, actually that's not true. There's gonna be a lot of people that are gonna watch this video that aren't uh, in the Bible college, but um, those of you who are, um, I, I feel the Lord saying, you know. Just because somebody else wanted you to do the training, wanted you to do this, and, and, and you might be doing it for the wrong reasons. Um, you might be, feel like you're doing it because um, somebody else wants you to do it, or just or maybe you feel like you, you, you whatever reason it is, um, you know, we, we have to be very careful um, with with what, how we, how we do Christianity and how we, how we um, seek God and I mean there's a lot of ways to people seek God but they're doing it in vain that's that's what I'm trying to get at um, we don't want to be doing things in vain we don't want to be doing things to be seen by man we don't want to be doing things uh, to try to get our we, you know there's a there's a um, there's a uh, video on my on my YouTube channel um, that I did called uh, righteous butter okay so so a lot of people they think that they could just rub on some righteous butter that they buy from the store on their face and they're gonna get anointed from God you know that's gonna anoint them make them righteous and just because you call something righteous doesn't mean it's righteous um, righteousness righteousness is um, it, it's not ours it's it's God's righteousness um, we cannot claim we cannot take uh, something that is not ours everything and anything that belongs to us including our hands our feet our eyes our ears our teeth our mouth our tongue the Bible says that there is power in the tongue there is, is power in our words there's power everything that just by you being able to listen to me right now you're, you're surged you have power you have life in you you your heart is beating you you, you your, your heart is literally beating in your chest. Your blood is flowing through your veins. Um, you can see, you can hear, you can taste, you can eat. These things are already God's blessing on your life. That's His mercy and His favor and His grace upon your life. We have to come to the realization that the anointing is already ours. We, the anointing has been freely given to us. All we have to do is receive it. We cannot earn our the anointing. We cannot work for the anointing. We cannot rub butter on our face for the anointing. We cannot go and rub up on a, on, a, on an anointed man of God and think we're going to get anointed of God. And, and even and even if you do, that's not your anointing. Um, so there's there's um, you know I don't I believe in the power of God. We have to believe in the power of God, of course. And the miracles and signs and wonders will follow those who believe. But we have to stop trying to just because you you just because you read your Bible. Uh, like I've read my Bible for I've read the Bible. I've I've taught on many subjects. I've read the Bible. I know the Bible. But do you know Jesus? Do you know literally know Jesus? Um, do you know who your Lord is? Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are as a son of God? Do you know who you are as a daughter of God? Are you, are you, see the Bible says that, the Bible says that we were created before the foundation of the world. So God created us 
before the the first the before the first page in the Bible where it says in the beginning we were we were we were already thought of and and planned before the beginning was even thought about. The Bible says that in Ephesians chapter one says before the foundations of the world you and I were created to be holy and blameless before God holy and blameless therefore if we were created to be holy and blameless then that means that we are able to be holy and blameless to be holy and blameless there we cannot do it on our own we can't rub on righteous butter we can't we can't go to a revival meeting that that where there's the anointing of God we can't get baptized you can't go in, you can't get dunked enough in the water you can't have the just because you have the gift of praying in tongues just because you can lay hands on the sick just because you can cast out devils just because you can prophesy does not mean you have the you have the anointing of God is is with it comes from within but just like Aaron Aaron when he was anointed he the, the oil flows down from his face it didn't go inside of him how we get anointed from God on the inside is by spending time with the Father in prayer and intercession, crying out to Him, having the fear of God. It's the fear of God that men depart from evil. Until you have the fear of the living God inside of your heart and you and you have a reverent fear of God, then and only then will God begin to increase your anointing you you have to bow down before my king you have to bow down before Jesus you have to bow down before uh, the king of kings and the lord of lords there's only one person on the earth that is here on the earth everyone says oh Jesus is here Jesus is here Jesus is not here Jesus is in heaven seated at the right hand of the father interceding for you and I the only one that's here is the holy spirit we have to be have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. We have to be in, in total communion with the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit says to jump, jump. If the Holy Spirit says to lift your stop and lift your left leg up in the air, you need to stop. Even if you're in front of a bunch of people and and you and and, and, you, and he says stop and lift up your left leg and, and now put your leg down. Stop. Lift up your right arm. Stop. Blink your right eye. I mean, you, you'll be so in tune with the Holy Spirit. That you have to do and obey him because when you do that God will use you God will God says that the foolish things of the world God uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise if people look at you and mock you and let mock at you and laugh at you because you're in a grocery store and the Holy Spirit says to stop and lift up your left left leg okay then do it because obviously there's something that's coming God has a plan and a purpose, and it's not to harm you, but to give you peace, hope, and a future. So if by you obeying the Holy Spirit, by lifting your leg up, at that time when he says, if he says, lift your leg up, stop it, lift your leg up, then there's something else that he, he just wants to know if you, if you can hear him, if you're going to obey him. Because the Holy Spirit, he has a very important job. His job is to lead us. His job is to lead us out of the wilderness. His job is to lead us into the promises of into the promised land his job is to convict us his job is to to tap us on the shoulder when we're doing wrong his job is to to bring correction his job is to give us power right he has a very he has a lot of different um his his job description is is, is he has a very big job description so we need to be in tune with the holy spirit and then that's how we receive the the holy spirit in power just don't think that just because somebody else that you that you think, oh wow, I wish I could be like that person. Well, God didn't create you to be that person. God did not create you to be Billy Graham. God created you to be you. God created me to be me. We all have individual gifts, powers, and anointings. So tap into the anointing that you have by spending time, quality time, in the presence of God. I'm not talking at church, worshiping God in corporate worship. I'm not talking praying in tongues for five hours all day long. I'm not talking reading your Bible all day long. I'm talking sitting in quiet in the presence of God and just saying, Father... That's all you have to say, Father, and he'll speak to you. He'll speak to you. I'm telling you, please trust what I'm saying. He will speak to you. 
You can have a conversation with him. He'll he'll give you pages and pages and pages of, of things uh, that tell you. And he'll talk to you. you. He'll talk to you. Get a piece of paper and just say, Father. And, be, and come before him and just call his name. Say, Father. Say, if you don't hear from him, say, I want to hear from you, Father. I want to hear from you. Speak to me. And he'll begin to speak to you. And write down what he's speaking to you. I'm telling you, he, God wants to speak to us. He has the Bible to speak to us, but he wants to speak to us on a personal level. He has so many things that he wants to tell us. We have to draw close to him. The Bible says draw close to him, God, and he will draw close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Wash your hands. Purify your hearts. Wash your hands means... Get rid of the bondage in your life. Get rid of the hatred. Get rid of the resentment. Get rid of the rejection. Get rid of the fear. Get rid of the pride. Get rid of get rid of it all. Bow down. Give it all. Give it all to Jesus. Surrender your life to Jesus. Not just 99.999%. Don't hold on to something. Quit holding on to that anger for your neighbor. Quit hanging on to that anger for your spouse. Quit hanging on to that anger. Quit hanging on to that resentment. Get rid of those things that you that you shouldn't be holding on to. Because that's if you want to get the anointing of God and you want the demons to bow down before 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 the Lord and you want to cast, be able to cast out devils accurately and powerfully. So the devils don't say like they said did to the sons of Sceva. I know who Jesus is, but who are you? And they jumped up on him, and he got all jacked up, and he had to run out of there buck naked. He he got demon possessed because he wasn't he wasn't surrendered to God. He was he wanted the anointing. He wanted the anointing. He wasn't willing to pay the price. Salvation is free, my brothers and sisters, but the anointing of God costs you your life. So lay your life down for Jesus. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. Get filled with the power of God. Go into the world. Preach the gospel to the nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.